What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back. It's NCAA 14 Dynasty time. We're picking it up with Miami Vice, our seven and four brand new school. It's kind of like an expansion school and we're at the tail end of the season. And when you looked at the schedule, this Georgia Tech team established probably the third hardest opponent that we're gonna face. And they are obviously at the opposite end of success, sitting at two and eight. Uh, they are, they're still a better team. They got you know better general uh, defense. Their overall offense is a little bit better. Everything's just a little bit better, even though Kirk Herbstreet is blessing us by taking us as, as the win here. Um, you know, we gotta, we gotta play for the bowl game. I don't even know if we're bowl eligible, to be completely honest with you. But when you look at the conference standings, we're, we're not good because we had, <laughs> we were not, unable to schedule any conference opponents sitting here at zero and zero when really we should be sitting at third place with a chance to get up to uh, second potentially with a eighth win, um, depending on how well we play in the conference. And uh, very annoying. It's it's pretty damn annoying when you look at the rest of the teams in the American. We're top five for sure. But yet, because of, we came in very, very late, sitting here at 13th. So we have to play for a bowl game because we're not going to play in the conference championship or anything like that. So as many wins as humanly possible is going to be important to going towards that goal of potentially playing in a bowl game. So we have this game here, week 13 against Georgia Tech. We'll get through that, and then we'll kick off an offseason that I have no idea what to expect. Oh, TC Rich off the play action. Takes this one deep and ties it up at seven apiece. 83 yards. We have a bunch of wide receiver recruits. Uh, we need to get 250 yards throwing, which shouldn't be a problem, especially... When you break a school record for the longest pass in history, 83 yards. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Rudy Carlson, the tight end at 12-yard touchdown reception. Miami Tech ball in a one hell of a game plan so far from head coach Tom Savage. Not good. Sometimes you trust your wide receivers a little too much. That was an underthrown ball that should never have been thrown. Come on, man. What? Three turnovers in the first half. Ten-point deficit. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Irvin has to protect the ball better. Two hands on the football, young man. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice, baby. Let's go! Oh, make a play with your legs. Try and have some redeeming qualities in this final regular season game. Make it close. Make it respectable. Irvin with the scamper to put us up to 21. There we go. Ramon Boston gets in for his 18th rushing touchdown of this season this game's just way out of hand but let's just you know can we get 40 points make it look respectable make it look like a shootout and not a turnover prone disappointment oh on fourth diving pass breakup on fourth and inches from the virginia tech corner i hope that was a corner and not a linebacker because that'd be cheesy that was, a, that was an amazing play well, that was an uh, annoying game. An annoying game to fit. I mean, they just have better athletes. Anytime you go against the biggest established program, they're going to have, like, everyone across the board for offense, defense on my team, especially the lines, the line of scrimmage. They're, like, high 60s. We get the occasional guy in the 70s, one guy in the 80s. And you look at these Georgia Techs, Florida States, you know, could, they all have high 70s minimum. So you're always going to be losing at the line of scrimmage, which makes it really, really difficult. And when you have the turnovers, like we had, it's going to be tough to dig yourself out of that hole. Um, still, I mean, hey, we we, uh, we threw the ball out there. We made it somewhat respectable. As respectable as a 61-35 to 35 loss could be. 468 yards, three touchdowns, four picks for Julius Irvin, the redshirt freshman. You see the potential. He also had 85 rushing yards and a, and a tutty. A lot of potential for this guy. We can give him to bulk up a little bit. 6'4", 230, 225. Get him on some of that Lane supplement, Lane Johnson supplements. Might have something there. Um, 
Not a lot of running. Obviously, we were in a massive hole early, but we still got a touchdown for Bostick. On the receiving front, nine catches, 173 yards, and a touchdown for Carlson, the tight end. Nine catches for Bostick. We had four catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown for TC Rich. Northcutt continuing his hot streak this sophomore to St. Cloud, Florida. Also got a touchdown defensively. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of positives to, to hang our hats on. Delance Bradley and Dwayne East got themselves some sacks. I think we had two forced fumbles, Vasher and Dorian Cruz. But uh, this, is, this is an ugly win, and hopefully we don't lose any recruits over it. So we are week 14 at the end of our regular season. Still uncertain about our bowl game. But we got some scholarship athletes that I need to bring uh, you guys all up to speed on. But we still have some players that are undecided. Jordan Young, the 76 offensive tackle, which will be a massive get. We have a sizable lead over West Virginia. Doug Carter, the 78 center. It's been us going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Florida State. I still think us beating Florida State should be the, the deciding factor. But we're still in the hunt there. We got Berg. Uh, 76 athlete Martin Washington, who looks like he's going to be, I think, a wide receiver. Uh, maybe a running back. I mean, he got 81 route running. Why didn't we scout the rest of them? Can we? Uh, I wish we. We're going to do that. Let's take off a couple points here. And I would love just to be able to see what position is this guy going to play. Uh, probably wide receiver. 75 catching, 81 route running. But uh, we're we're well on our way to landing him. 6'5", 220. Could even be, be, be tight end. Uh, Coleman, the running back here. We don't really... We're, we got running backs, but you can never have enough. And he looks a nice little player. And uh, you, know, you look at some of these guys, 68, 65, 64. You remember, we're still a year one school. And pretty much anyone over a 65 overall is going to start on our team. Uh, but here are some commits, some scholarship athletes that we have brought in. We got Alfred and Eaton, two running backs. We got our first five-star recruit ever. The number two wide receiver in the nation, Lee Warren. That's, that's historic for this program. Like, that's why we chose... Miami Tech, because they had state-of-the-art facilities. They are this new for-profit. I mean, most universities are for-profit. You know, trying to take advantage of these athletes being able to make money nowadays in NCAA. Uh, you know, we, we put all, all the stops to get a five-star prospect like Lee Warren. It's putting ourselves on the map. Now there's no more NCAA investigations or anything like that. Schools like us can land these five-star recruits, and Lee Warren has made history, and hopefully... Is, it's the beginning. It's the pipeline. Usually you worry about pipeline states. I'm worried about pipeline prospects. I just don't want to be that school that middles a year or two, maybe even three years, just, just kind of getting three-star recruits, maybe the occasional four-star. I want five-star recruits, and Lee Warren made history as our first. Uh, a couple more depth players. We got Tremblay at 71 tackle, 6'8". I mean, he's built like a right tackle. Rishwalski, the three-star. See, boys, it's worth scouting Two, one, even one star. Anyone that's interested in your school, at least spend your scouting. Because you never know you're going to find a diamond. And that's what we did with Jamal Rishwalski. Plus seven. Big time diamond at a big time position. Need. This guy here is going to be a day one starter for us as a true freshman. A couple 60s here. Like I said, anyone that's over 65 going to probably challenge for a starting position. We could have a whole lot of true freshmen coming and playing for Miami Tech next year. So, um... I got a notification that we had a finalist for the Heisman. So I figured, why not go and look at where we are at statistically. So look at the Heisman watch. Um, I actually don't have one here right now. You got uh, DeAndre Swift, McLeese from Virginia Tech, Jalen Hurts, Najee Harris, and Bryce Perkins. I don't really know why we don't have anything else there. Let's see, award finalists. I, we had a couple of them. There we go. Bostick for the Maxwells at number four right now. Obviously, these, these aren't... Um, you know, finalized yet. There's still some some games left to play, but we'll just see where we are individually. Bostick's third for the Walter Camp, which I'm pretty sure is the best running back in college football. The Begnerick. Um, we got Singleton at five. Vasher's number one right now. Hell yeah, Benny Vasher, middle linebacker. Uh, beating out Graylin Arnold and Geno Stone. We got Andrews at four, Singleton at five. I mean, we played a lot of defense. These guys had opportunities to get really, really uh, nice box score. He might have the best linebacker in college here, Benny Vasher. 89 tackles, 9 TFLs, a sack, 5 forced fumbles, and 3 interceptions. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, O'Brien, uh best quarterback. So, um, you know, uh, TC Rich here for the Blitnikoff, coming in at 6. The Mackies for best tight end. I definitely think our guy should have made it. Yeah, there we go. Carlson just cracking the list here at number 11. The Outlands for best lineman. 
Now, this is where we're definitely not going to see anyone. Our offensive line, very much a work in progress. Uh, for the Lombardi, uh, Cannon at 5, Wilkerson at 6, Bradley at 10. We got best linebacker, Benny Vasher at 1, Preston Andrews. I mean, obviously, there's some there's some shenanigans going on here, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to complain. I like seeing some of our players get respect, even though it's, you know, fairly generous, maybe slightly undeserved. Uh, none of our special teamers... Look like they're making this list right now. So let's just kind of look at the stats that put them in these places. Uh, Urban has the most passing yards in the NCAA right now with 3,700 passing yards, 26 touchdowns to 21 interceptions. We got 1,200 yards, 18 touchdowns from Ramon Bostic. That's why you're seeing him in the top three, top five for a lot of the running back awards. Urban also chipped in almost 400 rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns. So that gives him... Over 4,000 total yards, over 30 total touchdowns. That's, that's great for a redshirt freshman. This guy here is only going to get better. Receiving, T.C. Ritz, 63 catches, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Carlson, our tight end, 61 catches, 970 yards, 4 touchdowns. Bostic, dynamic out the backfield, showing he's a two-way player. 49 catches, 500 yards, 3 tutties. Northcutt came on really, really strong over the last three games, finished with 8 touchdowns on the season. When it comes to defense, Vasher, who's getting a lot of praise right now for linebacker, nine TFLs, that's three, I mean, you know, sure, sure. Uh, Wilkerson came in as our most hyped player. He finished with 61 tackles, 22 tackles for loss, six sacks. I mean, we might got some guys getting drafted. Like, you look at our team right now, Quincy Cannon, the defensive tackle, he is set to go to the draft. I think he could get drafted. Small school. You know, we don't have a reputation, but 49 tackles, 16 TFLs, 8 sacks. I think that's more than good enough to at least get late round consideration. That's a 76 overall. Our special teams, uh, you know, 70% for 78 kicker, not bad. Punting seems, you know, average at best. I, I like to think Ty Bird was one of the best return men in college, averaging almost 25 yards per return over almost a thousand yards over over a thousand all-purpose yards i think maybe you can get a little bit more respect as a return man so that's i just want to show you that where we are statistically and now let's just go into the rest of the offseason go into bowl season with an open mind and fingers crossed and they have announced the heisman trophy winner and it is deandre swift from georgia over 20 total touchdowns over 2200 yards Pretty respectful. Um, you know, even though I got a notification that one of our players was in the Heisman. Uh, full credit to DeAndre Swift. Really, really talented running back. And hey, he's out of Philly. And as we get a bunch of notifications awaiting where our bowl game's going to be, we got Benny Vasher, our linebacker, got Chuck Begnerick Award, which goes to the best linebacker in the country. We don't really need to add that. Benny Vasher has also won the Bronco Nagurski Award, which I have no idea what that is, but congrats to him. He's also won Linebacker of the Year, which is not surprising. And that's it as we sit through these brutally long loading screens. If I know that our 7-5 and five team did not make a bowl game. Huh? I see some 6-6 six and six teams making bowl games here. Couple seven and five, six and six, six and seven. I thought that was. I thought six wins was the cutoff. Like when you Texas San Antonio, six and six, Heart of Dallas Bowl, six and six, Florida Atlantic. Nate, we're not bowl eligible. That's brutal, man. That's absolutely brutal. We beat North Texas, who finished ranked. We beat Florida State, who was ranked, yet we can't get into a bowl game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. So as we sit on the sidelines here for bowl season, we simmed it through just to see. Let's kind of see where the bigger bowls finished up. Um, I, mean, I don't really know what, what's the, what, what's the definition of a big bowl. The Rose Bowl. Oregon actually won the Rose Bowl like they did in real life. That's kind of creepy. Uh, Sugar Bowl. Had an Oklahoma playing? No, they didn't. Was that the name of it? Either way, where's the National? The Natty. The BCS. What? The B It was, actually was LSU and Clemson. Finished up as your championship game. 
I mean, I don't remember the exact scores, but uh, Trevor Lawrence did not play very well. He looks like he actually got hurt, and they had to play uh, Bryce. Joe Burrow, four touched. That's creepy. That's really, really creepy that LSU and Clemson played. And LSU won. So at the player leaving stage, we have two guys that don't play at all that are transferring, and we're looking at some seniors here. Uh, Benny Vasher's leaving. Um, he might get drafted. He's the best linebacker in college. At least he was awarded like it. Uh, McQueen, our 80 safety, was good. Uh, Booker, our 77 corner, best guy by a mile. A couple, couple nice players. John Paul Bradford made some plays for us. Quincy Cannon, really, really good D-tag. I think we probably have two guys get drafted. I think we should see Quincy Cannon and Benny Vasher get drafted. Now, here's the question. Like, I was wondering, like, how do you get transfers? And now I don't know what my school is like. I figure it might be like when I was looking through this, it might show up as like orange if they're transferring to my school. But I have no idea what my school's abbreviation is. That's the problem of being Miami because there's Miami, Ohio. There's uh, obviously the Miami Hurricanes. So I was like kind of looking through here. I was trying to see like, look, you have Miami U, right? Josh DeBerry from Boston College. M-I-A-U. What is that? Is that my school? Is it not? Could it be mine? Because it's lowercase and it's not all cat. Like I'm trying to decipher what this is because then I went like I was kind of going through to Michigan big school and they got MIA Mike Morris defensive end 74 going to MIA it's like okay so th there are a couple of these players I have no idea if there's going to be a notification about what guys actually train look another one MIA Rashad Cheney 74 so just wait and see I guess if we get any transfer because boy oh boy I would love some transfers so going to the draft results, none of our guys got drafted. So I guess there will be a couple teams that get great undrafted free agents. We actually, here we go. Here's the transfer request. Will this tell us? There we go. We got some players. And we were. We got we got uh, Cheney. We got Mike Morris. Rashad Cheney, 74 freshman. Mike Morris, 74 freshman. And we got Jason Mercier, sophomore D-end from Florida International. We're dropping off the bag. You know, on defense, Pac-Man Jones was seen on campus at Minnesota, Michigan, and Florida National dropping off the bag to get some of these guys to flip. And those are three real, like, those are all impact playmakers. And that's great that we got them on the defensive line. Look at that, 6'6", 260. Can't wait to use this guy. Our results from National Signing Day. Uh, we pretty much just waiting on a couple guys here. We, we got 95% of our targets. Berg committed over Miami, over Florida. We got Martin Washington. It was us in Boise State for a really, really long time. We got Jordan Young. It seemed like at the end, West Virginia was going to kind of come out of nowhere. Really only disappointing one was Doug Carter. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We now, we now have an enemy. We now have a guy that whenever we find ourselves playing Florida State, you know, maybe we, maybe we chop block him somehow. You know, we keep that receipt. But... As we stated from the very beginning, we chose Miami Tech Vice because of, of the opportunity of just the grassroots, the new advantage of the NCAA rules. Because one of these things is not like the other one when you look at these big schools. We have the number eight class in only year one. Now, it might not be flashy with a lot of five and four stars, but we got 13, seven, or 17 three stars. We got no bums, one and two stars. We lucked out with Warren, the wide receiver, getting the five. But the number eight class in the first year of your school's existence, that's unreal. Training results time. Lots of Mexican training, if he's very apparent. Uh, Wilkerson returning, up plus four, up to an 88. TC Rich, redshirt senior, up to an 86. In terms of biggest gainers, look at that. Nick Hart, the center, plus six. Carlson's up to an 80. Bostick's up to an 80. I like, where's our quarterback? Plus four for Irvin. You got five awareness. That's pretty big for him. What do we got? Some of these, give me some of these accuracies. Plus three for throw accuracy. It's not bad. Uh, I mean, those are the big returning names anyway. Bostic. What else we got? Uh, Northcutt, plus five. Like seeing that. But generally speaking, you know, an acceptable, acceptable amount of development. Maybe we'll expect a little bit more uh, from... Uh, Carl, I thought Carlson for almost getting a thousand yards as a tight end last year. I thought we might get more than plus three. Bostic for getting all like two thousand total yards. Thought plus four could be a little bit more generous, but it is what it is. Generally acceptable for our squad. I love seeing all the eighty. 
So to kind of wrap up the episode here, we're in the last stage really of the off season before we get into the preseason. It's custom conferences time. Now we do have the opportunity pretty much at any point, especially when you're already pulling top 10 recruiting classes to flip. We're, we're, we're better than the American. We're too big for the American. But given how much disrespect, how they strong-armed us in the no conference of games, we getting missed the ball. I want to be here for another year. I want to wreak havoc over the AAC before we make a decision whether we're going to go to the, the ACC, whether we're going to go to the, the Big 12, whether we're going to go to the SEC. Business is still had and need to be dealt in the AAC. I, you know, I want to spank UCF. I'm going to make sure we get some goddamn scheduled games. We already ranked Cincinnati. Are you kidding me? We can't cop a rank if we get one to Cincinnati? So we are staying put another year in the AAC. I don't know if it could be three years in the AAC, but until we dominate this, there is an unfinished chapter in the book known as the Miami Tech Dynasty, and it starts here in year two in the American Athletic Conference. So thank you guys for watching the conclusion to year one for the Miami Tech Vice dynasty in ncaa 14 as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and until next time it's c4 so i'll catch you guys back here next week and peace out money i'm spending i'm out and i'm shopping you talking that shit when you talking and talking look at my options look at me dropping ass in the game like who are you stopping not me not me not never not me not me not never not me not me not never i'm way too clever Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent, I'm doing it big, way too persistent.